Good evening, YouTube. You guys are now watching another segment of the Cali Effect. Today, we're going to be going over the Raid Raptor deck profile. Now, this is a deck um, that can definitely compete at your local level event. Hell, it might even win a couple regionals or top a couple regionals here and there. And I feel like this deck has a very, very solid uh, base and nucleus that could be built around on, even for more competitive play. Do I think it's one of the best decks in the format? No, not even close. But I do think that this deck is still ridiculous when you can summon a Cleef Four Towers. But let's get to the deck profile and why I play certain card choices. I'm going to start off with three copies of Raid Raptor Tribute Lanius. It's easily one of the best Raid Raptor cards, mainly because it's a foolish burial when it's normal summon to special summon. Um, the second effect you'll never use because the wake up, the rank up magic equip spell cards aren't good at all. But if they were, like, if the rank up magic spell cards that I did play were quick play, then that card would be, like, awesome. It'd be, like, best, the best card hands down. I mean, even though it does require me to destroy a monster in a battle, it's still the fact that I can say shirts rank up, which is a very pro big problem for this deck. Um, next is three copies of Raid Raptor Vanishing Lanius. This card is awesome in itself. Um, I think I went over it in the, in the how to play. It's a, it's a it's a Goblin and Berg. The only difference between this and Goblin and Berg is that it doesn't force any cards to miss timing because it doesn't have a second effect. Um, and you can special summon it from your graveyard and special summon himself, and he can still gain his effects. He's an awesome card. He's literally hands down the best Raid Raptor card we have on our disposal. Um, three copy of Mimicry Lanius. Um, you'll never use the first effect. I mean, at least I've never used the first effect to increase all your monsters level by one. But I do use the second effect early and often. When it's in your graveyard, you can banish it uh, to add a Raid Raptor card from your deck to your graveyard. That's pivotal for searching those key cards that you need. Um, those really good combo pieces. Um, I think that's it for the threes. Uh, for the two elves, I played two copies of Sharp Lanius. Um, I, I said in my video it's the, the third best Blackwing. I want to put it up that it's probably the second best Blackwing behind Blackwing Zephyro. But I'm just playing. Raid Raptor Sharp Lanius is awesome. Um, it doesn't have to destroy a monster. It just has to attack. And its first effect switches monsters to defense. So more often than not, you're going to be able to get Sharp Lanius' effect. The only drawback is that it has to attack. So more often than not, you're going to get all your effects in main phase two. But ultimately, it's a really good card. Very good uh, uh, recruiter from the graveyard um and switching monsters to defense is sometimes can be very beneficial for you uh three two copies of fuzzy lanius um there was a point in time i was playing three but the restrictions of fuzzy lanius make it a very subpar card and the restrictions being you can only some sum special summon raid raptor monsters so basically i'm limited to a four strix if i play this card i felt that only one uh, or only two was necessary because more often than not i'll search it and i'll use it for like you know twin twister food um and you know and then i can bypass the you know i can only use special special summon raid raptors for that whole thing and i still get the search um ultimately if i do open it on turn one i make the the four strix with it because obviously that's the most optimal play and it's not like a completely terrible card but you know i, I just admitted his drawbacks it's often a lore food in, in the mid to late game um two copies of four strix i love this card i think that this is the second best black wing card or raid raptor card i don't know why i keep calling this deck black wings uh, mainly because it, it allows you to directly go into whatever rank up you want so if i'm playing against something like Clee demise i can just go into the level six and then i rank it up to the level eight and there's nothing they can do about it and then it's the exact same thing if i just want to make ultimate falcon i think that this is the only way uh the best way to make ultimate falcon i think cattle call is a very subpar card but hey for those turbo decks that just like love to brick open two rank ups two cattle calls and and no real way to do anything you know it is what it is i, I like four strikes a lot better as you guys can see um two copy of pain lanius uh people say that it's bad i think it's better uh because it allows me to go into castell still so it's not terrible and most importantly it does allow a free special summon for a rank up a lot of people opt to singing lanius but you have to remember in order to make singing lanius you already have to establish an xc monster which is not always true pain lanius actually allows me uh to make that xc board when i want to it doesn't allow me to go i have to have a like whole bunch of ridiculous plays i mean ultimately you could cop cut one pain lanius for a singing lanius i was actually thinking about that they're both really good cards but that's the reason why i decided not to go with singing lanius um, um, and then the Selma, the main board, three copies of Maxi. I, I want to draw into my rank ups. I want to draw into my combo pieces. I want to draw into anything um, that I can and early and often. So obviously I want to play three copies of Maxi. Um, I feel if you're playing less than three copies, there has to be a really good reason. But most of the time you shouldn't. Um, that's it for the monsters. For the spells, I play three copies of rank up uh, Astro Force. Uh, this is... 
arguably the best rank up card to ever exist, mainly because it's had more relevancy um, than any other ranked up card other than I guess that seventh one when you draw it, you get to special summon a whole bunch of crap. But this one actually was good in Burning Abyss, um, and now it comes to pay homage to, to Raid Raptors, allowing me to go uh, into the, the big cards that I need. And then three copies of Raid Raptor Skip Force for the exact same reason that Raid Raptor the Astro Force. The reason why we don't play any rank ups by one is because that's extremely too slow and I already have six rank up spell cards. Um, Soul Shade Force, I mean, I guess it's not bad. Like I said, it does help you make Cyber Dragon Infinity, but I'm really pressed for Extra Deck Room and I don't like paying half my life points since I already have to pay like 6,500 life points on top of that through my Solemn cards. Um, two copies of Twin Twisters. I think this card is, is very bad in the main board if you're playing tier one, but I'm not playing tier one. So Twin Twisters is awesome in the main board. I don't like being domained. Um, I don't like my opponent's such traps against Rogue. Uh, I, I just don't like it. So Twin Twisters is a good card. Um, it's almost free when I like use my, if you use your cards, right? Um, it was actually, when I was saying how to play Red Raptors, I mentioned the Lord of Darkness and people kind of like, you know, they didn't like it. Um, they said that, why would I banish my combo pieces? Mainly because this card, this deck searches every single monster in existence for little to no cost. Literally, you search just for playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, I can search multiple pieces of the exact same card that I needed. Uh, Tribute Lanius becomes dead over time. Uh, Mimicry Lanius becomes dead over time. Fuzzy Lanius, uh, more often than not, I don't want to use this effect. Pain Lanius becomes dead over time, and so does uh, Four Strix, if, or Last Strix, if I already have uh, Ultimate Falcon, or I've already used through both Ultimate Falcons. Allure of Darkness allows me to first search into my rank ups, it allows me to dig into better cards, and allows me to get rid of cards that are no longer useful to me. I feel that Allure of Darkness, I shouldn't even have to explain why I'm running Allure of Darkness in a deck that needs to draw pieces. Um, two copies of Ray Raptor Ness. Uh, the reason why I opt to not run three, I actually have another card uh, to prove why why you shouldn't be running three. But Ray Raptor Ness is really good. You don't want to draw multiple copies of it, so that's why I decided to run two. Um, if you draw, if you run three and draw two, then you obviously have a dead card. Uh, Foolish Burial serves as a third Ray Raptor's Ness, uh, mainly because you can just fool, Foolish Burial the Mimicry and Mimicry can search your Ness. Um, you use Foolish Burial for, I mean, I guess if you need Fuzzy Lanius to your hand. Um, you can use it for a multitude of things, but more often than not, I'm using Foolish Burial to search Ray Raptor Ness, and then, you know, I just go off on my combos. Um, I hate Domain Monarch, so, I mean, Raigeki is really much else. If I go first to Domain Monarchs, I win because I summon a card that they can't get over. But if I'm going second, then Twin Twisters and Raigeki, I mean, whatever. More often than not, you're going to lose that game one to them anyways. Um, for traps, I don't like playing this card. I think that it's not uh, that great of a card, but it's almost like I'm forced because I'm, pl I'm playing something that's already subpar. So three copies of Solemn Strikes. Monarchs can play around it. Uh, Cosmos, you have to hit the right cards. Uh, Pepe, it's awesome. It's awesome against Pepe. Um, that's like the only thing that it's like a, a complete blowout with. If you're striking Pepe, and if you're playing against Cosmos and you're striking the right cards and you're winning, but I, I just don't like the overall matchup. It's like really, really bad against Burning Abyss, and you know, that's a deck. So, um, three strikes, I, it, it's really good against Rogue, and also, and it's just a pretty decent card. Um, I never thought that I would ever say Solemn is decent. Uh, one copy of Solemn Warning. Uh, I'm playing strike, so I might as well play warning. I need those extra traps. I need to stop my opponent from, uh, you know, summoning strategy since I can't play on my opponent's turn like Mark. Um, and then bottomless and time space trap hole. Uh, I, I really tried to dig and find another uh, trap hole card. I went through all of them, and I felt time space trap hole was probably the best, uh, the second best trap hole card at this point in time. Like I wanted to run uh, trap trick trap hole nightmare because it did stop like a, a couple of good cards, but it, it didn't do enough against a lot of certain decks like monarchs. Time space trap hole doesn't really do much either, so it's like you know it's a lose lose situation. I mean at least it returns the cards back to the deck. It's a blowout against pendulum summons if they don't destroy it, and then bottomless trap hole is is I think I still think it's amazing, especially when you can activate these two cards from deck. So you know it's not bad. Um, as you guys can see, a lot of cards that I did talk about in the video, I wound up not playing. Um, the Raid Raptor Nair Readiness, you guys were right. I couldn't, uh, it doesn't stop the Ultimate Falcon, so I ultimately dropped it for the Time Space Trap Hole. Um, that's it for the main board. I guess now I can get you to the side deck, uh, or the extra deck. The extra deck entails uh, 77 Deadly Sins, uh, cards and outright blowout. For some reason, if your Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon isn't doing enough, just make it into a 77 Sins and you're awesome. Sometimes you can even activate the effects of a uh, uh, rank up magic skip force special summon the ultimate falcon and then rank it up into the 77 so you know that's always a thing uh it, it, it has a lot of good things going for it 
two copies of Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon. A lot of people are like, why do you play two? Because two is mandatory. Hey, there was a time where I needed three, but I, w I wouldn't dare play three. Uh, Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon is really easy to make. It's so easy to summon. It's so easy to use. And when you summon it, as, as long as you're not playing against like somebody that plays Kaijus, you're more than likely going to win. Um, two copies of Raid Raptor Satellite Cannon Falcon. Uh, this card's a blowout in any demise deck. Because basically the only way to stop it is if they solemn warning uh, your rank up magic, uh, your rank up magic cards. They can't solemn warning the summon of the monster, or they can't solemn strike it because it's a spell card summoning it. And when satellite ca cannon is summoned, your opponent can't activate cards in response, so they can't solemn strike you. So more often than not, if you're going against like Clee Demise, you'll send you Demise, anything that sets mounts ultimate background, just summon this and you'll win every single time. Um, Two copies of uh, Raid Raptor Revolution for Falcon. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, it's either Ultimate Falcon or Bust. I disagree because uh, Raid Raptor Revolution Falcon is an extremely good card. Being able to attack all of your opponent's special summon monsters by detaching, being able to destroy special summon monsters, and then reducing them anytime it battles, not when it attacks. When it battles, that monster's attack and defense will reduce to zero. I think Revolution Falcon is a really, really good card. Um, sometimes you don't have like the necessary tools to rank up to Ultimate Falcon or go into Satellite County Falcon. Sometimes just making four strips into a Raid Raptor Revolution falcon is enough ironically um next for the fours three copies of ray raptor four strix uh that's pretty obvious i want to play two because i actually want to play um the the tarantula pain gainer it allows me to make my ray raptor satellite count in ultimately in two uh 77 deadly sins but you know i don't really have the room um one copy of abyss dweller i mean that's obvious uh diamond dire wolf uh, that card's like the nuts. Like, just destroy Ray Raptor useless cards. I find myself destroying four strixes that have no materials on it more often than not. Um, it's the nuts in here, and it's good spot removal. Castell, I mean, still another great card that you can make. Uh, Trap Tricks or Flasia, I play the Trap Tricks engine. Um, a lot of times you make a board, and I, like I said, I can't play cards on my opponent's turn, so I have to make up for it by playing Solemns and Trap Holes and stuff like that. And then, uh, this card, I actually threw it in at the last minute, and it's been working awesome. Uh, number F-Zero Utopic Future. Complete, helpful, very, very helpful in uh, the, the the Cosmo matchup. What I normally do is I make two four strictures, you know, make a Utopic Future, and then we go from there. Uh, kind of like what Burning Abyss does for Cosmo. So I thought that this, that was awesome. Um, I Like, I really wish I could fill that Tarantula card. And I know you guys are like, oh, remove this. And, I mean, I'm going to tell you guys right now. I'm not going to listen a lot of, I'm not saying that you guys' ideas are bad, it's just, uh, the tarantula is not that important. All right, guys, for extra deck, I stick to the principle of five. And for the people that don't know what the principle of five is, let's try to get this video to 200 likes, and I'll actually make a video about the principle of five. Um, it's a really good concept that's been working for me so far, but I think I should just go into the extra deck, and then we'll talk about it later if this gets 200 likes. Make sure you get it to 200 likes. Um, for Monarchs, I'm going to go ahead and say three copies of Mask of Restrict if I'm going first. Um, I'm more than likely going to be going first in game two, unfortunately. Um, I tried to make ways around it, but unless I'm making like first turn Ultimate Falcon, I'm guaranteed to go second or, or to go first next game because I'm gonna lose or unless they love me that much I win game one and then you know I can just do that um, Mask Restrict is a complete blowout against regular deck monarchs or regular monarchs and then for extra deck I actually do uh, have anti spell for society for another reason but you know it kind of meshes pretty well um, and that, that's how it works if I'm going second uh, those effect veilers always come handy they're really nice stops Adia stops Erebus stops Aether stops a lot of their really good plays um, I really couldn't think of anything else I wanted to stop their interaction be on my turn but i really didn't see anything that i could use that would have been extremely beneficial um that's pretty much it for uh monarchs uh for Kazmo for them cosmos i play the best card of all time this is literally one of the best cards i should make a video about it three copies of uh kaiju c gamma seal the kaiju sea turtle this card is amazing um I use it to tribute their dark ladies because dark ladies are pretty bad. I mean, like, that hurts me. I use it to tribute dark destroyers because I, I don't always have a way out to dark destroyer. And Kaiju Gamma Seal is a special summonable monster um, that Raid Raptor, uh, the Ultimate Falcon, can deal with without them getting an extra pilot. Kaiju Gamma Seal is probably just one of the most dick bag cards of all time. And I, I really like it in here for that sideboard. Oh, in the mirror match, you know, if I'm ever playing in the mirror match, I can just Gamma Seal their cards because, you know, Gamma Seal is important. Um, if I'm going first, I just go ahead and main the chaos trap holes uh chaos trap holes i mean it's kind of obvious that 2000 is nice i wish that it wasn't a counter trap because then i'd be main boarding them but you know you already know what chaos trap hole does if you guys don't it, it literally stops the matchup uh for pp or pepe 
Um, I just go ahead. I have a really good matchup. I just go ahead and main the the or put in the anti spell fragrances if I'm going first. If I'm going second, more often than not, I'll just keep the same build. Uh, I, I like I said, I feel like I have a really good matchup. They tend not to out the ultimate falcon, so you know, um, as long as they don't side in kaiju's, which a lot of them don't even play kaiju's, I think I'm perfectly fine. Um, if they do, then I mean, I guess we we'll still have to play like Yu-Gi-Oh. So there, there it is. Um, for BA, uh, I do flying seas if I'm going second. Uh, flying Seas is awesome, awesome. Allows the, you know, them to stop their plays and for me to recuperate myself. Sometimes I can sit on Flying Sea and then, you know, get the right amount of combo pieces. Sometimes I can't. That in combination with Maxi is awesome. And if I'm going first still, I can always still just side in those cash trap holes because, you know, those are really good against them too. Um, that's it for the side deck. I think I can get you guys into a combo tutorial. All right, guys, for combo tutorials, I try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, I'm going to make a one card four strikes. The only thing it requires is Raid Raptor Tribute Lanius. What you're going to do is you're going to normal summon Raid Raptor Tribute Lanius and activate its effect so to send Mimicry Lanius to your graveyard. Furthermore, you're going to activate Mimicry Lanius. It's going to banish itself uh, to add Lanius to your hand. For, after that, use the effect of Lanius to special summon itself and there you go that's how you make Raid Raptors Force Strix you can use the effect of Raid Raptors Force Strix uh, to send the fuzzy Lanius to the graveyard uh, to add any of your rank fours possibly even vanishing Lanius um, or anything in between and then it'll add another fuzzy Lanius into your hand basically a one card Raid Raptor Force Strix and that's what makes this deck a force to be reckoned with the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the one card uh, or the two card uh, ultimate falcon what you're going to do is you're going to normal summon the uh raid raptor last tricks and you're going to activate its effect tributing itself to special summon raid raptor satellite cannon from it next you're going to either activate rake up magic ash or skip force or rank up magic astral force and that's going to turn the raid raptor satellite cannon falcon into raid raptor ultimate falcon um the last combo i want to talk to you guys about is just infinite pluses um it's going to require raid raptor vanishing lanius and tribute lanius what you're going to do is you're going to normal summon uh, vanishing Lanius uses effect to special summon Tribute Lanius. Tribute Lanius effect is going to activate to send Mimicry Lanius to the graveyard. Mimicry Lanius is going to banish itself and that's going to activate Raid Raptor Ness. You're going to go ahead and activate the effects of Raid Raptor Ness. With that, you're going to add another Vanishing Lanius to your hand. Furthermore, you're going to XC summon into your Raid Raptor Force Strix, detach a material. And that's how you get basically free plus as a two card combo that wound up to you having two cards in your hand, a Ray Raptor Ness, and a Four Strix on your field. These are just some of the small combos that this deck can use to make so many great boards. Make Ray Raptors great again, or make Winged Beast great again. I don't know how that really quotes you know falls in line with the raid raptor deck profile but thank you guys so much for watching i still do have raid raptor deck course for sale so you guys should always check the google documents to be able to pick them up please like comment subscribe but most of all enjoy